In this episode of Get Better Basketball Live, I have Coach Michael Lynch with me who's going to be talking about practice planning. Coach Lynch is one of the coaches who I follow very closely on social media, including Twitter, for a number of reasons that I'm going to share with you in a couple of minutes. But why don't you keep watching this episode and find out for yourself. Get Better Basketball Live is up next. Hi, everyone. Coach DeMarco here with Get Better Basketball Live. Today, my guest is Michael Lynch, head basketball coach at Leicester High School in Massachusetts. Very excited to have Mike with us today because he's one of the people that I follow very closely on social media. I love what he shares on Twitter, the drills, diagrams, uh, you know, sample practice plans, videos, so many different things that he shares with uh, the Twitter community. I'm always appreciated. So thank you for joining us today, Mike. No, John, I'm happy to be on. I, uh, you know, I've been trying to chime in on the, uh, the, the get better chat every week as, as much as I can. Usually it uh, coincides with bedtime. So I try to chime in as, as, as much as I can. And, uh, you know, obviously I appreciate a lot of the stuff you do. I, I, you know, I've went back and looked at a few of these other uh, chats you've had. And, I, you know, there was some interesting stuff the last few weeks. So I'm excited. I'm hoping I can give uh, people something they can use. Awesome. Well, we're going to be talking about practice planning today. So I'm looking forward to it. I know that a lot of questions come up, um, you know, with coaches and practice plannings and use of small sided games and, uh, just games-based coaching, but just any insight into practice planning, I think is always appreciated by the coaching community. But before we jump into that, uh, Coach, um, maybe just a little background about yourself and your coaching background and, and also um, where coaches can reach you. I know that you do share a lot of information out there and coaches are going to watch this and they might have some follow-up questions. So if you have any of that information, I would, I would love to um, let you share it. Yeah, I'll, once we get into the, the, the presentation, I have a lot of the, uh, my email address and, um, you know, my uh, Twitter handle is uh, Lester Basketball, just L-E-I-C Basketball. Um, and, and that's, you know, I think where I end up sharing a lot of the stuff that, uh, you know, that I work on. And, uh, you know, I'm obviously the, the boys basketball coach there. This is like year, I think this was year 11 uh, this past season. Uh, so I've been there uh, quite a while. I'm a history teacher, so I, I teach at the school and, um, you know, was sort of lucky enough after, you know, about five years of JV at, at another school and then at Leicester, I was able to uh, get the varsity job. And, um, you know, that's where, I, that's where I've been. I, I live in town, so this is sort of, uh, I'm pretty invested in, in this particular program itself. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I think one of the cool things about, Twitter, I would probably say like, it's been about four years, four or five years, I think where I've like heavily been invested in really using Twitter as a tool to, you know, to meet people and to, uh, you know, just get a chance to talk to other coaches and, and see what they do well. It's not always the easiest thing when the, the people you know in coaching are the ones you're playing against, right? Like it's not always the easiest thing to get uh, good basketball talk. And I think Twitter has been a way for me to do that uh, you know, in like a different avenue without there being that, like the, the chance of me playing the person I'm sharing with. So, uh, you know, I think it's, that, that has been something I think that's been rewarding, like to be able to reach out to people and in some cases have people reach out to me that I, I might be able to give advice with. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to talk a little bit about our school once we get into the presentation and sort of uh, some things about Massachusetts. Like, obviously, you know, you know, our restrictions, but I think that plays a role in practice planning too. So that may be something we'll get into in a few minutes, but uh, yeah, that's about it for me. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you sharing that. And I just got into the social media thing a couple, couple years ago myself. And, you know, it definitely has helped me as a coach. And obviously I like to share with other coaches, but I've learned a lot from coaches like yourself and other great coaches um, who are willing to share the game. And that's one of the things I really appreciate about social media. And just one, one more question before we jump into the presentation, which I'm, I'm obviously looking forward to. But just thinking about, because we're going to be talking about practice planning today. So you said you've, you've been at Leicester uh, for 11 years as, as a head coach? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yep. 
So I guess my question would be, how has uh, your method to practice planning evolved? Because I'm just, I'm thinking about myself when I started out coaching and now even seeing all the great stuff on social media that's shared and learning from other coaches. So how ha have you evolved in terms of practice planning from your early years to where you are right now? I, I think mostly, I think I've really simplified more of what we're trying to do at practice. Um, you know, certainly the emphasis on, you know, three on three and four on four, uh, you know, small sided games has become a bigger part of, of our practices. Although that was always something I think that I always used, but well, I think the biggest part of it is, I think getting rid of the drills that don't apply to the game as much. And then the, the second part of it would probably be to gear your drills to fit the systems that you use. You know, so for instance, if we were, you know, using, uh, you know, a, a dribble drive system, or let, let's make our skill drills uh, fit what we're going to do. You know, our, our drills need to work on stopping and, and uh, you know, dribble starts and work on our finishes, contested finishes more. And, you know, I, I think if we're a motion team, we got to work on the things that are going to make us a better motion team, you know, the screening angles and the reads that go along with it. So, you know, I would probably say those are the two biggest things is, is, you know, trying to get away from those just sort of like, uh, you know, every coach does the drills that they were taught, right? That's where you start, right? The drills that you were taught, that's what you know, so you teach it. And I think as you go along, you realize more of like what you like. I think I've probably undergone a, a lot of that in the last um, four years. You know, I feel like right now I'm at a good place where I, I, you know, I know what I want to accomplish and, I, and it's, it's not more complex, it's more simple. So yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And I, I think we, we all kind of have undergone that as coaches. And I think about early on, I, I love the point about, you know, sort of how I was coached as a player and some of the drills that I did, even as a high school player. And then you, you tend to bring that with you in your early years coaching. And, you know, for me, the transition to being more games based and really trying to find things that um, are transferable to the game and, you know, what our system was. I know you mentioned dribble drive and we had a pressure defense. So we had to find things that worked for us that are probably a little bit different than what other teams, um, you know, might do. Um, so I'm excited today to see what you have to share in terms of practice planning. Um, so why don't we, why don't we jump into this here and I'll let you share out um, your, your sample plan. You know, what I, th I thought I would do is just, just talk a little bit about, um, you know, our situation uh, in Massachusetts and at Leicester High School and, and in, in, uh, only in the sense that I think a little bit of that plays into how I choose to practice and, you know, what types of concepts we, we choose to use. So, you know, that, that's really my, my main purpose for including this in the presentation first. Uh, you know, Leicester High School, it, it's, a, it's a small school. Um, you know, we have a lot of these in Massachusetts. You know, it's a single, it's a single town. We have somewhere around like, you know, 450 students, some years more, some years less. Uh, we are part of a 12-team uh, conference that is, is really, um, has become very widespread. Like, you know, the top three or four schools now are becoming really big. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're somewhere around like the seventh, eighth in size. Um, you know, with the biggest in our conference being around 1,200 and the lowest being around like 250-ish, I think. Uh, so it, it's a conference where you're going to see, um, you know, some really good, some really good teams. Uh, but as far as side go, size goes, you know, I think uh, there's some real variety. Uh, I would say the vast majority of our kids are multi-sport athletes. Um, you know, for example, this, you know, past season, we had, I think, 10 of our our 13 varsity players uh, were football players and uh, we had made the uh, state finals in football. So, you know, we missed the whole first week of practice because these guys were, you know, out competing for a state championship. So I think to put some perspective on, on, uh, on, on those type of environments, I think, uh, you know, uh, the, the practice planning becomes even more important when you have so little time to begin with in multi-sport athletes and, um, you know, I, I do think that is a, a unique kind of scenario that, that plays into your, your thinking. 
Now, obviously, Massachusetts, I know that you've had some Massachusetts coaches on the chat already. Um, you know, obviously, we have no off-season coaching, uh, which means, I think, a, a few things. You know, I, I think we have to be more scheme-centric as opposed to, you know, simply, um, you know, not having the opportunity to do that in the off-season. You know, many coaches will just layer in their offense as they go through the off season and then get into the season. And, you know, all they got to do is some skill work and some refinement and they're good to go. And that is not the case in Massachusetts. So, you know, I, I think the no off season coaching plays a big role in how you plan practices. Uh, our preseasons are really, really short. I mean, we're talking two weeks and then it's go time. And, uh, you know, every single game matters the way that it's set up now. Uh, meaning, you know, you don't win 10, you don't get in the postseason for the most part. So, you know, uh, it puts a huge emphasis on that first two weeks, you know, making sure that you are fully prepared, uh, that you have what you need to get done, accomplished in those first two weeks. And, um, you know, I put that in there. We do play with the shot clock, which is not super relevant to kind of what we're going to go over today, but just something that is a little bit unique uh, to our situation in Massachusetts too. So, you know, I think a, a few things to pull out of that. I think are uh, how important the first two weeks of practice are and how, you know, you certainly can't ignore skill development, but there is a greater focus, I believe, on scheme from the start than maybe perhaps there is in other parts of the country, given our constraints of time. So, you know, certainly that's uh, something I wanted to mention here early on. All right. Now, um, this is the first thing I wanted to get into is uh, what I had done this past summer. Uh, this past summer, I created, uh, might be a little hard to see on, the, on this screen. I can certainly like uh, give people the link to this presentation, you know, after the fact. I was something I wanted to spend a lot of time on uh, in the summer. And, you know, I kind of put some bullets on this, this left-hand side here to kind of explain uh, you don't know why I wanted to do that. Um, you know, one thing I, I, I think uh, that we do during the first week as coaches is we like sit and we plan these like masterpieces. We spend two hours planning this like perfect uh, practice plan. And, and then you get into like the third, the fourth week of the season. And all of a sudden we're like scrolling stuff down on like uh, note cards and, uh, you know, and reusing the day before's practice plan. And, you know, what I really wanted to do is put something on one single page, something that I could print off 50 times at the start of the season, put it in my notebook, and then at some point before practice, pull it out and circle the things I wanted to do that day, and um, that's that. And have it all on one piece of paper in front of me, you know, that I, I would be able to use. And I, I think that was a, um, something I thought worked out pretty well, you know, for myself. I mean, uh, you know, I can't speak for everybody else, but, you know, you teach till two o'clock, then I got to go pick up my two, you know, two of my kids at the school, uh, you know, next door, then I got to bring them back to practice, and then we're practicing for an hour and a half right after that, you know, I, I just, listen, I don't have time to take three hours per day to plan practice, so I think putting the time in in the summer to create something like this, I think, is going to pay dividends. Um, now, what I did is I, I, I pretty much try to build like schedules. Um, you know, I, I built in, you know, basically what our, our typical week would look like, um, you know, with, with whether it would be like a lift day, whether it would be like a full practice day, whether it's typically a game day. And I just put that there as like a reminder to myself, you know, to keep the schedule, to make sure that we're fitting the two lifts in a week, uh, you know, to make sure that our, our JV coach would have an idea of like what his practices should look like in length as well. Coach, can I, and, can I ask a question? You mentioned the lifting and this comes up a lot with coaches. So uh, I'm curious that you mentioned two days a week. How do you balance that with your practice plan? Is the lift, um, if you practice for two hours, is that part of the two hours or what, what does it look like for you? How do you, how do you squeeze those in? I know how important it is. Yeah, you know, and, and I'm, I'm not going to, I would not categorize that as something 
as one of my strengths. But I, I, I really tried to, you know, put together a half an hour lifting sessions twice a week. And, you know, generally speaking, I would have to limit practice to an hour and a half to account for this. And, uh, you know, on certain days we might, might have gone and lifted first and then went into the gym and, and, and practiced. You know, I, I always thought it went better when we practiced first and then went down as a group into the weight room and took that last half an hour to end practice. You know, I thought that worked out well as well. But, you know, obviously you can kind of see the days in this plan. You know, Sundays, I think for us, since we generally play on Tuesdays, are great lift days. Um, and then, of course, you know, I tried to get like uh, the day after a game day, right? I mean, it's really tough in the middle of a week to play hard on Tuesday nights and then Wednesday, you know, pound them for a two-hour practice. So I really like that schedule of, of Wednesdays and Sundays being our two days. So, you know, that's basically how we would do it is, is we would, uh, you know, I'd put together like three stations, uh, get us in like groups of four. They go down there and, you know, have a, you know, have them go from each station 30 minutes max, and then we get out. And, and that's, that's how I tried to do it. Um, I mean, you know, it's, it's hard sometimes, you know, we were trying to do some leadership stuff as well. And then you have like, you know, some games you get, some weeks you have three, three games in a given week. It's just, you know, it's not perfect, but I, I thought I did a better job with this than I, than I typically do. So just one my, other question, coach, on the, the practice guide. So when you say that you have, uh, you circle the concepts you want to use. So is that like small sided games you want to incorporate or is that like finishing and shooting and, you know, so how, how do you um, balance out those concepts? What does that yes. look like? If you look on this left hand side, um, you know, this is sort of the typical like progression that I would use in a given practice, get skill development in at the start of practice sort of like, um, you know, eliminate your typical, like, you know, layup line drills and, and those type of things and, and just get right into our skill development from the start. And then I would simply work through the phases of the game, transition, get into our half court offense, transition defense, defense. And then if we were doing specials, we would do that, you know, sort of at the end. Um, but, and that's sort of how I would work the progressions. Now, I mean, whether we do, short-sighted games or, or five on five, like that may kind of vary day to day. And, um, you know, what I did on this right-hand side, I just sort of labeled this as our, our drill library. And, you know, this is something I spent a lot of time on uh, this summer. And my basic goal was to get it down to a single page. The, dr the drills that I think are the most important and the ones that work the best and the ones that I feel, uh, you know, are the best ones. And, you know, I, I think uh, one thing I've done over like a couple of years is I've, I've even narrowed this list down from two years ago and, you know, okay, we didn't even use this drill at all. Like get rid of it. And, you know, I really tried to, to simplify it. And, um, you know, I, I really, I, I think kids don't want to do the same thing every day, but, you know, I think there's, there's something to be said for us to be consistent with the types of drills we do and concepts we're teaching. So, you know, that's sort of what I did. Like, you know, we got a few shooting drills we're going to use. We got a few finishing drills we're going to use. We may not use them every day, of course, right? But there's going to be a few of them that we, um, you know, that we're going to do over the course of the season. Um, you know, the, the practice guide itself is – um, you know, I'm going to show us a nice little neat one I did on the computer, but reality, I'm just taking this thing. I'm going down the list of things that I need us to work on. And at the very bottom, I kind of made a note, like, you know, depending on where we are in the season, you know, perhaps that's going to dictate what we do in practice. You know, if, we're, if we had played a game on Tuesday and, you know, we were, were really poor with reading down screens or something along those lines, you know, yeah, let's add a, let's add a small sided game in there where we can get work on that. And, um, you know, I think that's an advantage of this too, right? I, I can just simply say, all right, I know we need to work on this. Let's get this drill in here for today. And I have it right in front of my face, you know? I'm not searching through my fast draw. Um, you know, I'm not searching through all my notebooks 
to find drills. Like, no, I, I have my drill library right in front of me that I worked on all summer, and, and that's where I'm going to draw from day to day. So, you know, I think the practice guide is a, like, really good deep dive type of thing that coaches could do in the offseason, especially in our situation, right, where we don't have kids in here for four-man workouts. We don't have the teams in these off-season workouts. And, you know, so I think improving in this area, I think, is um, – could be a real, uh, you know, I think it's worthwhile. How hard was it to, uh, <laughs> how hard was it to let go of some of those drills or things that you had used for a lot of years? Um, I love this, first of all. I think you and I have some very similar philosophies, and I like the simplicity in this and the fact that you can look at what you need to focus on and before practice, this is what we need to do. I, I love it, honestly, and this is something I would still right off the bat, if I was still team coaching uh, right now. But how hard was it for you to pare down some of those those drills? Some of them feel like, um, you know, they're your baby and you really like using them. Uh, was, was that tough to do? Yeah, yeah, I definitely, I think that is a challenge, right? I think, uh, you know, I think that's one thing I would say I do well is, is, you know, I spent a lot of time looking back on the season and kind of picking apart what went, what, what went well, what didn't. And, you know, you certainly, I, I think, have to make choices, right, about what types of drills we're going to keep. So I have a good example, right? Like, so at the top of the page, I put this one on oh finishing. You know, and I would say, uh, let's like rewind two seasons. You know, we did this a lot. We worked on just simple this is sort of like a Doug Novak concept he used and just you know from the free throw line in working on different finishes and you know stride stops and jump stops and you know inside hand finishes and whatnot and you know when I went back over our practice film in the summer you know I just really thought that guys were going through the motions right that you know there were certain players just just kind of you know they weren't getting much out of it and you know what I decided to do this season was to just simply use like a like a one on one. Uh, we just call it one on one Russian, you know. But it's basically just you know two guys in the corners. They get to a dribble handoff and they're going one on one at the rim. And even if I didn't want it to be full contact, I might give them guided defense, right? Like, um, so I would have the defense just pretend to block it from behind to force them to do something, you know, scoop or inside hand finishing. You know, so when you're saying like how hard was it to get rid of some of those drills, I think that is something that we have to do, right? You have to go back and look like, you know, is, are we getting out, out of this drill what we think we're getting? And, you know, I didn't think we got as much out of the one-on-one finishing stuff. And I really tried to ditch that a little bit this year. So, you yeah, know, that's a great question. And it most definitely is, you know? I mean, uh, yeah, you know, I think uh, all coaches probably struggle with that, right? Whether it's scheme or whether it's drills, 11-man uh, fast break, I really love too, but I didn't include it in our transition drills. You know, I kind of just thought like we weren't getting as much out of those scenarios as we could, as we would in some of the other things I left in there. Um, so, yeah, it's a great question because you you know that's a challenge, right? You've got to pare it down. You know, the the main part of what I wanted to put into this, and um, you know, like I said, you know. I'm going to take this blank slate, this, this blank practice guide and literally print it off 50 times. And I just put this in my little notebook. You know, I like to get to the gym like a half an hour, sometimes a little bit, you know, an hour earlier so I can watch some of the JV stuff. And, and I'll just sit there and circle what I, I know we need to do for that night. And, you know, I kind of did this on the computer th this afternoon. So I just highlighted some stuff and then typed it in. But, you know, this would be in my chicken scratch, circled in. I might write some notes about, you know, what I want to accomplish in these different areas for the day and um, kind of go from there. So, you know, this is uh, what, what a completed practice plan might look like. But I, w I wouldn't try to pretend like we stick to these perfect time frames every day. I mean, I've seen some coaches practice plans where, where I mean, they're impressive, but, you know, from uh, 707 to 714, we're going to do this, you know, I don't know that I go that in depth, right? I, I think I got a pretty good grasp on how long I want to 
I, I want to be in a certain concept. And um, I think I do a pretty good job of sticking to this basic format, right? That, you know, we have to include skill development every day. I think one of the things I already mentioned was in Massachusetts, we don't have this off-season coaching. I mean, there is a part, uh, I mean, our job is to improve the skill level of our players over the course of the months that we can affect them. And, uh, you know, that's certainly the number one goal at the JV level and even for the varsity level. Like, we've got to improve the skill level of our guys. You know, I think this is an area where I've tended to put more focus over the last four or five years, uh, making sure that we get something that's finishing, something that's shooting. And, you know, on a, you know we may not do ball handling every day, but, um, you know, we're going to make sure we get finishing and shooting in every single day. And, you know, 20 minutes, I think, is, is, is uh, may not seem like a ton of time, but if we're going to start with it and we're going to uh, – we're going to make sure it's high energy. And, you know, I think uh, the best way to do that is to make sure that you pare down the drills to only the things that you think are the best that you got. Um, so, you know, that's what I'm looking for in the skill development. It's not all going to be one and oh. And I, in fact, I think making things, you know, doing a lot of your one-on-one -on -one right here is a great way to, to get that stuff in. Uh, you know, from transition perspective, you know, you, you usually, you know, we're either doing something that's like progression based, uh, something that's decision making based, or we're going to work like five on five into like flowing from half court into transition. So, you know, all of these drills may accomplish one of those different goals. You know, if we're early for the first week of the season, yeah, we're probably going to be trying to teach them the progression. Like, this is what I want our outlet looking for as you bring the ball up the floor. Um, you know, by mid-season, we got to be making better decisions. So we're going to be including more decision-based drills in there. Um, you know, obviously flowing for us, that's one of our pillars is to be able to flow from, from transition to half court. So making sure we're working on that. Like, can our, I don't want to call a lot of set plays personally. So teaching our guys how to get from transition to half court offense, I think is uh, something that you need to work on. So you know, I think we got to get a good 15 minutes of this in every single day. I mean, we, have, we may actually do the, more of this in other parts of the practice, but, you know, I think every day repping what you're trying to get in transition, I think, is, is key. Uh, you know, obviously, we're going to spend the bulk of our time on half court and on, uh, sorry, half court offense and defense. So, I mean, you know, I'm putting this 30 minute time frame here. I also think it's important to recognize, right? Like, how much of your offense actually comes from transition and comes from broken plays um, and how much comes from half court. You know, I, I do these like scores created studies every off season. I mean, and, and on average, right. I've had other coaches do it on their own and kind of like send me their results. You know, about so at most teams average between 20 and a third, 20% uh, and a third of their offense that comes from transition, you know? So I think, making sure we don't ignore this part of the game, I think is, is a really important part. We don't spend our entire practice in half court offense. Um, you know, so I, I do think that is important to recognize. Uh, you know, I'm, obviously I'm going to talk about a couple of these concepts in a little bit, you know, uh, transition defense, you know, you'd ask the question before, how is my practice planning change? You know, I think most of the time I ignored transition defense, you know, it wasn't really that big of a problem. I didn't really see it that way. And I think, you know, over the last couple of years, this has been an area where we're, we're trying to squeeze more efficiency out of. So finding time in our practice to specifically work on this concept, you know, and like a five on five or even a breakdown version, um, I think is important in, in that, you know, maybe in our shorter practices, we don't get as much of this in, but if we're practicing for two hours, we've got to carve time in for this. And then, of course, defense, um, you know, not just teaching technique, but teaching scheme. Um, you know, this is ob obviously something that uh, I'm going to kind of talk a little bit more about later on. But, you know, I think this is generally the format that I'm, I'm using each day. You know, perhaps we pick different drills to go along with this. But I think, I'm gonna, I'm, uh, you know, we're going to follow this, this format, skill, and then let's get in half court, transition, uh, half court, transition again. And, and make sure that we touch on all four phases of the game here. So, Coach, I, 
I got a question on, on Twitter today from a coach who was curious about progressions, like, you know, when to take the next step um, with your offense or defense, next progression, um, or even in some of the SSGs or the games-based approach, you know, what the next step might look like. It almost seems like they're curious about sort of evaluating how you evaluate the progress throughout the season um, and kind of advance your players from early on in the season um, to the, the later parts of the season and what that, and I know it looks a little different for everybody, but what that might look like for you. Yeah, and that's, that's a good question. I mean, and, you know, like this, you know, coaching is, it's not an exact science. You know, you have to kind of be able to have a good feel on, on where your team is. And, um, you know, I know for sure if I was coaching at the younger levels, you know, I, I would spend more time in this, the, the fundamentals. I mean, not that we ignore this stuff as varsity coaches, but, you know, I think I would be a little slower in progressing my team throughout the season. I mean, look at the bottom line is we don't have a lot of time to, you know, slowly progress. We have two weeks. So, you know, getting us into four on four and three on three and, and live scenarios is, is a must from the start. We don't have, I don't have a month to slowly build up to that. Now, you know, one, uh, one thought I did have on that is, you know, I think you do need to make sure that like, for instance, right. You know, uh, we ran a lot of motion strong this year and uh, you know, if I'm watching game film and I'm, I'm watching us make cuts off of the staggered screen and, and we're just not reading the screens the right way you know, perhaps that's a clear indicator that we've got to go back into our practice plan and do more breakdown. And we've got to do more breakdown on walking our man in. Perhaps we do like a two on two down screen or, or we just go four on four and work the staggered screen. You know, that might be a good example of like how you can pare down your practice. Uh, because, you know, I think, uh, you know, being able to, to use film as a way to guide your own practice planning, I think, is, is the best way to do it. Um, you know, maybe you don't have that option as a, a, a JV coach or, you know, coaching the younger levels. Um, but I think that's stuff you got to be looking for in the games, you know. Uh, are we not executing fundamentals the right way, you know. So maybe you perhaps go backwards. I mean, don't be afraid to go backwards if you need to. So... Yeah, that's a really deep question and a hard one to answer. Um, I think that, well, one of the things I appreciate that you've said a couple of times here, Coach, and I, I really appreciate about you, I think, as a, as a coach, as I learn more about you, is how reflective you are. You, you really talked about how you reflect a lot in the summertime. And then really great advice with or without the film, just reflecting on your team and what it looks like. You can see some of that on the court. And obviously, you mentioned motion strong and you can see some of that in film as well, but going back and, and being willing to, you know, take a step back if you need to, to then take a couple of steps forward. So I appreciate how reflective you are. And I think that's great advice for coaches who are trying to evaluate where their team is um, throughout the season. Um, so we've seen the practice guide and we've seen um, sample practice plan here. And I'm curious about some of the, drills and things that you incorporate in your practice. So um, do you have some of that that you can share with us as well? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to try to like uh, what I, I pretty much did is I, I tried to take each, you know, section, uh, skill development, you know, our half court O and D and then transition O and D. And I tried to, uh, I, I figured I'd, I'd put up, you know, a combination of videos or diagrams as to how we might execute it. You know, like I'm going to be, straightforward like not none of the drills that i'm including here are like uh you know insanely unique and uh or insanely comp you know complicated by any means you know i think when you're choosing the drills to to put in like we have to make sure like do they fit what we are going to do in the games um you know is the, are they improving you know in, in any particular way um so you know, I think that that should kind of play a role. I guess I'll kind of get to like some details as I go through, but uh, that's really why 
you know, what I wanted to say ahead of time. Now, the first thing I put in here was uh, just like a simple shooting drill. I mean, this is a, I want to say I got this uh, from Jay Wright uh, years ago. And, um, you know, we got a team of 12 guys, uh, you know, at the high school level, you know, uh, I'm sure there are, are coaches that have uh, entire staffs. And there have been years where I've had like great volunteers to help. But, you know, when you're in the dog days of the season, uh, most nights it's me, right? Like we got 12 guys, and one person. Uh, I think one of the things you want to do is, is get as many people involved in the drill as possible. You know, so in this diagram we got on this side of the screen, uh, what we're doing is we've got three-man shooting groups. Uh, I'm, you know, sometimes I'll time it. Uh, I think in this video, what I said is you make five and then the next group jumps on. We kind of made it like a competitive type of drill. And, uh, you know, we got three shooters at the end of the court that obviously we can't see. We got three shooters uh, at the end of the court, which the video is sort of tuned into. And then at each end of the court, we've got another group of three that's ready to jump in. Um, you know, so this is you know, one of the, the only thing I'll explain without, you know, I don't want to like bore us to death with the details here is I'm basically telling our guys get to the slots or get to the corners and uh, once you shoot it you're obviously going to make a pass out to the next shooter and then sprint to one of the other four spots and uh, you know as a coach you know what you we should be looking for are you know the passing techniques you, sh you, you know whatever your strategy is for teaching kids shooting perhaps you can you can focus on whether it's feet or whether it's follow through or the turn or uh, whatever you, you know, you shooting gurus get into, um, you know, but this is basically what we were doing, something that looks like this. This is one of my favorites, Coach. Uh, great way to get up a lot of shots in a short amount of time. I, I stole it from uh, Vance Wahlberg with the dribble drive stuff. So, um, but that's a, I, I love doing that. And it's very upbeat and game speed too, which is awesome. Yeah, I mean, you know, if we're just looking at a 10 second clip, I got a couple of sophomores in that drill. So, you know, I, I, if I had to, you know, if I wasn't staring at my practice plan, which I'm doing in the video, I, I probably would have yelled at them about the passing, you know, that kind of chucking themselves a couple one-handed passes there. But, you know, I think I like something like that, right? I mean, 30 seconds, they get their shots up, and the next six are on, on, off, on, off, on, off. I think that day I was trying to get us to 100 makes before we started practice. So, you know, I think that's a, a good example. Uh, you know, get drills in there where guys are not sitting, you know, and, 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 you know, if you only have one coach, I think this is a good way to kind of keep eyes on as many people as possible. All right, so I, um, I, I put uh, a transition drill in here that we do, I would say, almost every day. I mean, I would say as we get a little deeper into the season, perhaps we're working on decision-making stuff a little bit more. Um, and this uh, 2.0 trips drill uh, is basically a drill where we're just working on the progression of our transition reads. Um, you know, in just simple, simple terms, I want our guys looking pitch ahead first, attack the middle with the dribble next, and then play through the trailer last. And I mean, this is a five on O drill. I mean, you know, I like this drill as a way to like, all right, let's get rid of sprinting. Let's get our guys sprinting the floor here, learning their spacing, making sure their habits are in their, you know, their habits are in place. I mean, are, you know, could we add defense to this? Of course. In fact, sometimes what we'll do is on the last trip, we'll put the next five out and they'll meet them five on five. Um, now, uh, the video is not, is only, you know, this isn't the world's greatest video. Uh, unlike some of these coaches, I don't have, uh, I don't have the huddle focus film on the ceiling here. So this is me setting up a tripod here. And this is the most part I'm telling them, don't take it out of bounds. Just get it to the point guard and let's go. Pitch ahead. Here we you know, have it comes up sometimes with conditioning and, and stuff. And 
this is a great way to condition players without putting them on the line and just sprinting them back and forth. They're getting the transition piece, they're conditioning. Um, so there, this serves a lot of, a lot of obviously transition first and foremost, but this, this serves a lot of purpose, other purposes as well. There's passing in there, there's shooting in there. Um, so there's a lot, a lot that's coming out of this for the players. You know, and what I would do is, right, we get our 12 players, let's, uh, you know, I get two teams of six. Those five sprint out there, and as soon as that ball goes in the net, the next five are gone. And, you know, getting up and down. And, uh, you know, perhaps on the last trip, you know, we might just have them, have them get into our motion strong, right? So on the last trip, enter to the trailer, swing it, let's get into motion strong. That's actually what they were doing on that last rep. That way we get to half-court offense. I don't, have, I don't have to do any five on off. We got up and down. We're working on progression, working on getting wide and running. And we've done the 5 on 0 So now let's get into the, the reads and the meat of the offense. So, um, you know, I understand the coaches that, that need defense on there at all times might not like these kind of drills. But, look, you don't have to do these every day, too. You know, read your team as well. You know, you guys played hard on Tuesday night. We don't need to be banging bodies for two hours on Wednesday. So, you know, perhaps that this is a day where we use this kind of a drill game. So, yeah, so this is what I chose to put in the presentation for half court. Now, I'll be honest, like if you went back to the practice guide and looked, I mean, I don't have a ton of like little drills that we're working on. I mean, we play a ton of four on four. We've got 12 guys. Let's get three teams of four and let's work on different aspects of our offense. I mean, if uh, you were a dribble drive team, you would just set up a four on four dribble drive scenario, right? Maybe you start with like a little, uh, you know, loop action or you, you know, you start with slot to slot and cut, uh, you know, as, as, you know, last year we, you know, tried to incorporate a lot of our motion strong stuff into this. So we'd simply just get our swing, swing into the stagger and then we play live from there. And, um, you know, a lot of coaches probably use cut rope. I mean, the way we would do it uh, would be if you score, you stay, and the losing team jumps off and new defense jumps on. And uh, the only time they have to, like, adhere to what, you know, like the only time I'm sticking my nose in is when the ball starts, you know, when the ball is checked up with a new team, they have to start in the action that we're dictating. So, you know, if I wanted them to work on the stagger, that's, that's what they have to start with. Um, other than that, they're playing free, you know, and they're playing four on four. They're looking for, you know, driving opportunities and, and, and whatnot. And, you know, I think kids would much prefer to learn this way as opposed to a bunch of like two on O drills or a bunch of drills that are sort of like, um, you know, micromanaged by coaches. So we do a ton of four on four. The cutthroat keeps it a little bit competitive. And, um, you know, like I got one little clip of a four on four stagger that I, I caught in the practice film. So they just checked it up right into the stagger. You know, now that's actually something that we'll get in games a lot. We just call it a wing drive. You know, we swing it through the stagger and he'll rip and go. You know, that's not me dictating it too much. They got that just out of, you know, that's, that's them playing out of the stagger. I think that, I think stuff like this allows us to jump in and coach what we need to, but also let the players play more as opposed to us, you know, micromanaging every part of the practice. So I, that's something I, I think I, I like a lot. I, I won't go too crazy with, with this. Uh, I didn't have any good film of, of, of us doing transition defense stuff, but, you know, I, this is a drill that I, that I like as well. But again, I'm going to get, I'm basically going to get two groups of six, cut the team in half. Uh, you know, and we have set on the quarter at a time. When this is over, the next six will jump on, and we're getting reps of this. Um, you know, this is kind of a drill I adopted. Um, you know, I've seen this for many other coaches and called all different sorts of things. And, and then I also uh, kind of use this Aaron Fern does a drill with tagging up. And uh, we tried to incorporate a lot of those principles into our transition defense this year. So we would do something like this. You know, the ball swings along the baseline. And then when it gets to X3, he simply passes it out to one. 
and closes out. And this will give you a chance as, as a coach to teach whatever kind of closeouts that you teach. Uh, typically, we get a shot from there. And then we're teaching our principles. You know, perhaps you have shooters sprint back, right? Um, you know, in our case, off the ball, we would want to teach our tagging up principles, right? Pinning the man at the top of the key and then getting to the high side on the wings right here. And then let's say the shot misses and one rebounds, we would now play this live down and back. So we would play three on three live down and back. We've got to stop the basketball we're getting back on defense. And, um, you know, that three on three drill, I think was pretty good. As soon as those six are done, those guys get off, the new six jump on and, and we're playing this again. Um, so again, like another example of, of a drill in which guys are not sitting for a long time, we're getting a, a bunch of reps on one of our principles and they're getting a little bit to play live, right? Like I'm not micromanaging. You know, I've seen close out drills, you know, where coaches just, and I've, I've, I've done this in the past where we just line up and do closeouts on a, on a guy who's not even playing. Right. And uh, you know, to me, I think this is a way to kind of improve that where we can incorporate the closeouts and tagging up and transition defense all in one. So, you know, this is something that I, I, I really like. I, I love how you take a drill like the three versus three closeouts and you incorporate the tagging up piece, you incorporate transition into it. Um, and also the tempo that you guys seem to practice with. All the drills you're sharing are a lot of players being involved. There's not a lot of downtime. Um, is that something you really try to it, – it seems like it, so I guess I want to ask, is, is that something you try to focus on is really – um, keeping that tempo up and running throughout, you know, the practice? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I, I could even be better at it. You know, I, I you know, I, I don't get a chance to tape every single practice. I, I really, I, I would love to get it someone to, that could sit up there and tape some of the full court stuff, you know, but I think that is an important part, right? I mean, I think if you were a player, you know, how would you want your practices to be, right? You're like, the players want to play. They don't want to stand in lines, right? And, uh, this is sort of off the topic, but, uh, you know, I have, I have four kids. I've coached like every sport on earth from soccer to, uh, you know, to baseball, to basketball, to everything. And to be honest with you, over the last few years, I, th I think that's really brought the point home. Like, you, you, you know, why, do, why would we want high school kids standing in lines, right? They don't want to be in lines. They want to be playing. So I think having drills that incorporate that is just um, – I think it's going to make practice more enjoyable for them. And, you know, just, I think less downtime keeps players focused. And, uh, you know, I, the pace of practice is something that I still think I can even get better at. Um, you know, I've had other coaches watch my practice films to try to see, you know, and I think that's, that's been a focal point of mine is, you know, less downtime. Less locker room time. I don't like the idea of guys going into the locker room during practice. Like, get everything in the gym. So it's water, 30 seconds, and then we're up and moving. Um, you know, to me, I think, yeah, I don't want to be there all night. I want to go in there. I want to get done what we need to get done. I want to, you know, have it be crisp and then have us getting out of there feeling fresh, feeling good. And I think, you know, that, that's probably a little bit behind that kind of stuff. A lot, a lot, can, be said, a lot can be said about that, Coach. Uh, so just a, a, a quick question here. Uh, Coach again on Twitter asked about the lower levels, and you spoke to this a little bit in terms of maybe focusing, not that you don't do fundamentals at the varsity level, but maybe spending a little more time on that. So how do you um, align, I guess, what you do at the varsity level with maybe your junior varsity or your freshman? And what are those – and I'm not look, you know, I know you could probably – go into a lot of detail on JV and freshmen, what those practices look like, but just a general look at what, how, how different are those practices from what you're doing at, at the varsity level? Yeah. I mean, I think that's, that's, you know, for my situation personally, like all we have is we have a JV team and a varsity team. Um, and uh, the middle school, we have a middle school team, but we're not in the same building. So technically I, re I really don't have a lot of influence uh, over what happens there. So, you know, that's, that's a story for another day. Uh, but, you know, I, I think that is a, a constant 
you know, I would like our JV practices to look as similar to our practices as possible, right? Also knowing that there's got to be a slower pace to what they're doing, right? Like I, you know, um, I think most coaches realize, you know, like, you know, on any given JV team, there'll be a good part of those kids that eventually move up and a, a good part that'll sort of, you know, go in different directions as they get older. And, um, you know, I would like those practices to look as similar as, as, as possible. And knowing that the drills might have to be, uh, the progressions might have to be slower. And uh, perhaps the drills might need to be, uh, there may be some drills that they use a little bit better because of their, that team's level of understanding. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, 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 it kind of depends. But, you know, to me, in a perfect world, like, those practices should look the same. Um, you know, it's a it's, it is a challenge. You know, I, I, this is my 11th year, and I've had, I think, three or four different JV coaches. Um, you know, so it's kind of like, uh, it's not always easy, right? You have to kind of like, um, let them coach. I mean, it has to be enjoyable somewhat for them too, but at the same time, like they should look the same and there should be a similar feel to the kind of practices that, that you guys do. Um, I think the best programs have that in place, right? So uh, to me, that would be the way that I, I see it. I'm sure. Uh, you know, coaches listening, I think that's always a challenge as you have different levels, whether it's JV or freshman, to, you know, what that looks like and, and um, how you manage that. So I think you and I are in the same, uh, on the same page in terms of trying to make it as similar as possible. And I think a lot of coaches would, would agree with that as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so you know, I don't, don't want to go crazy here I'm talking a ton of drills, but I thought this was a good example on the practice plan. I had it drawn in as three on three, no screens. So, you know, let's say instead of working one on one, right? So one drill when I was a player, we would do all the time is just one on one from the corner, one on one from the wing, from the point, you know. And, uh, you know, to me, I, I've just always enjoyed coaching things better in, in the group format. And, you know, let's, let's work on guarding the basketball one-on-one, -on -one, but in more of like a free flowing type of setting. Um, you know, so in, in this type of scenario, let's just say we're going to tell the offense, Hey, you can do whatever you want. You cannot set any screens, no ball screens. This is all drive in space. And this is going to put a ton of pressure on whoever's guarding the ball, you know, to, work on defending one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, they may get some help on a certain drive, but setting the constraint of no screening, no, uh, no on-ball, no off-ball screen, you got to just pass and cut, right? And uh, teaching defense that way is, I think, the, the method that I prefer to do it. Uh, <clears throat> you know, in a perfect world, you had an assistant coach, and you can say, hey, assistant coach, like, hey, you take the offense, I'll take the defense, and you can make your teaching points in between reps, right? We've got six guys on the court. As soon as this rep's over, they're out of there. The new six jump in. And, um, yeah, I'll just clip, I'll just clip the, hit the video here. Oh, I always do this. I'll hit the video here quick. I'm just watch like a question um, of it. See, this video is kind of meant for our offense, but I would, if I had to talk defense, we could do the same thing for D. A lot of the drills you've shared, Coach, uh, really hit both sides of the ball, too, which is another thing. I, the efficiency level of what I'm seeing in your practice, you know, um, really most of what you're doing hit both sides of the ball. Um, and I think there's there's a lot that can be said about that. Yeah. You, you know, I, I've actually, like, uh, had conversations with coaches on Twitter before, and they've said, you know, like, what do you do about defense? I'm like, you know, and as long as, as – as long as I'm not coaching this section of practice with like offense in mind, and I'll be honest with you, like that is where my mind wanders most of the time. Uh, you know, but I think from like a coach's perspective, like, you know, Hey, this is a defensive segment, you know, here, you know, you guys, here's your constraints. Here's how you're going to play. And let's, let, let's, let's let the coaches focus on defensive elements. Right. So perhaps like in that little clip, you know, the guy from the corner, wasn't in the gap. He was sort of in like no man's land. You know, maybe that's, maybe that's the, 
the the talking point I'm telling him as he steps off the floor. But yeah, you're right though. I, I think combining offense and defense is is something that is almost necessary, right? I mean, uh, think of the list of things you have to do from day one till your first game and the number of things you've got to touch on from zones to uh, out of bounds stuff, to side out, to special situations. I mean, any way that you can save time by creating drills that combine, I think is going to benefit you as a coach. Yeah. So I'm kind of getting to the end here and uh, you know, feel free if you had other things to chime in with, but you know, these are some, some general thoughts and, and I may be a little bit repetitive here, but these are some things I was thinking as I was finishing up the um, presentation. Um, you know, number one is to, is to keep your drills simple. You know, if, if you have trouble explaining the drill to them, imagine how that drill is going to look when they try to execute. It. And I'm not saying we want pretty drills that are perfectly run. I'm just saying keep the drills simple so that the focus can be on players reacting. You know, I kind of put like, and players in general should know what the goal is, right? Uh, if we're doing three on three, no screening, they know the goal is to get my man one on one and keep him in front, right? As from the coaching perspective, like what are your teaching points for this drill? Um, you know, I, I I think that's a big one, right? Like if if you don't have a teaching point that is directly pulled from the drill, like what what is it? Why are you including this drill in your plan, right? So, I, I, to me, that is something that I I kind of thought is a really key element, right? In choosing the drills that you choose. Um, the drill library, I won't, I won't be super repetitive, but you know, take the time to trim down what you do. We all know like we've accumulated, uh, coaches have probably accumulated more stuff from March till right now than they, you know, than they'll, they will ever use in their entire career. So trimming down what we see, uh, I think is a great exercise. Uh, this isn't something I got to, but this I think is important. Don't ignore certain phases of the game in your practice plans. You know, uh, one example I had in mind was like defense. Like a lot of times I'll put defense at the end of my practice plans. And that always seems the thing that always seems to be the thing that gets shortchanged, right? They, you're running out of time. You're cutting this drill short. I think it might make sense for you to switch up the elements of the game in your practice plan. You know, that way guys aren't working on defense at the end of practice. That's what they start with some days. Um, you know, that is something I think I've taken into consideration a little bit more. Um, you know, make sure that we're not ignoring some certain phase of the game. And uh, we've said this numerous times, like engagement. I think, you know, not all teachers are, uh, I'm sorry, not all coaches are teachers, but I think one thing that you would want in a classroom and that you would want as a coach is to get as many people involved in what you're doing as possible. So, you know, if we're doing a one-on-one -on -one drill, let's get them on four hoops as opposed to two. Uh, you know, if, if we're working on uh, that first video, we're doing the, the Olympic shooting, right? Let's not get 12 people at one hoop. Let's, let's split them up and use the two ends. Um, you know, that is something I think that's really important. I think for, even for younger coaches, you know, I think most older coaches know this by now, but, you know, the younger, younger coaches, you know, get them engaged as much as possible. So, Coach, I just had one, one last question uh, for you. you. You are extremely reflective, and like I said, I really appreciate that. And I know last year you talked about your drill library and really paring things down. Um, so I am curious, and, and you may have already spoke this a little bit or not, but um, is there, is there looking and reflecting on this season, um, is there something that you're looking at in terms of practice for next year, um, that you might be incorporating in practice or that you've thought that you'd like to spend more time on? To be honest, like we lost a week of practice cause all the, cause you know, all the football kids came late. We've had some injuries early in the season. Um, and to be honest, we just had so many kids banged up and, so little time I think I kind of uh you know didn't didn't invest in the teaching part as much as I needed to and uh that is something that I, I would really want to, to get better at next year is just um really make that a focal point I got to do a better job of of teaching 
you know, uh, who is the get back guy and then when you should attack and when you shouldn't, I, I, th I really think that could have been done better. And that's something I've, I've looked at a lot so far. So transition defense, like stick to the plan and invest more time in it in the practice setting. Well, I hope as uh, you know, you mentioned a couple of things that you're thinking about and I hope you're, uh, you're sharing that stuff out next year. I feel like over the last couple of years, as I've joined social media, um, I've always had like a big takeaway um, from you, you know, each year. And I, I really appreciate the, the drill library and paring things down this past year. And so I'm, I'm always looking to learn and grow. And um, I always appreciate that. And I know other coaches um, do as well. So thank you so much uh, for joining us tonight and talking practice plans. And I guess as we, as we leave today, if coaches want to reach out to you with questions, is that what's the best way for them to contact you? Yeah, so uh, at the bottom of the presentation, I, I put all my contact info. Um, email is mflinch21 at yahoo.com. That's, that's probably the best way to get in touch. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, my, my Twitter handle's at the bottom. You know, I'd be more than happy to, to talk uh, basketball if, if you want to find me there. Um, you know, one thing I've really, you, you know, I, I – honestly just kind of started doing it because I, I like to write about the game and I think it's a great way for me to like talk out my own thinking you know I've created our you know my own blog on our team website so it's lesterbasketball.com slash coaches corner and you know I've done like some newsletters that you know I kind of uh you know update our 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 community on, on different stuff that's going on with our team and I talk a little basketball and maybe include some stuff that I found out in the basketball world and uh you know I started doing a lot of these blog posts that I, I really enjoy kind of like you know looking at certain parts of the game you know in fact I kind of threw this little picture in over here I mean I even have like a little practice tab on it and I've got a few articles in there in which I kind of looked at this very topic right of, of practice planning and I've got some stuff in there that I've talked about over the last couple of years that I think uh might be helpful to coaches too if you want to check that out uh, but yeah, those are the places, email, Twitter, check out the coach's corner. I think I've got some decent stuff on there and um, yeah, well, hopefully uh, people can find something useful here. Awesome. Well, thank you again so much, coach. I know I check out, uh, you know, the coach's corner and obviously on social media, as I mentioned before, all the stuff you put out there. So thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. Uh, have a great night. All right, coach. We'll see you.